the 80s was not the best time for the Toronto Maple Leafs and their fans. Well, we managed to survive the 80s, but it wasn't all that great. I mean, we made the playoffs, but we missed the playoffs a lot more than we made the playoffs. And most of it was due to high goal against average, um, which mainly was because the puck was in the back of our net a lot, and the team hung the goaltenders out to dry. Now, the two Leaf goaltenders in the 80s were the popcorn kid, Mike Palmatier, and Ken Reggett. Now, Mike was with the Toronto Maple Leafs between 1976 to 1984, but with the exception of being traded to the Washington Capitals in 1980, uh, missing the 81-82 season because of a knee injury and recovering from a knee surgery, uh, in which he was traded back to Toronto uh, in exchange for cash in 82, and his final days as a Leaf um, were in 84, where at the end of the season, the Leafs just didn't want him back after a, uh, a goal against average of 4.88. And that will pretty much send any goaltender packing. Now, Ken Reggett was drafted by the Leafs in the third round, uh, 45th overall in 1984, in which he was also named Goalie of the Year in the Western Hockey League. Now, his goal t uh, against average was not all that much better than the Popcorn Kids, uh, but in the playoffs, he did much better. In fact, one of my favorite 80s moments was, um, you know, Game 6 in the Division Semifinals in 1987 against the St. Louis Blues, where Ken Reggett and the Toronto Maple Leafs took on uh, Joe Bowen's co-broadcaster Greg Millen in net for the St. Louis Blues, and some amazing goals were scored in that game. I mean, there was Brad Smith's uh, goal to open the scoring for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, he completely beat Millen up there. And then there's Mark Osborne's rocket from the blue line. Um, wow, those were just amazing. And Ken Reggett's uh, goals against average was somewhere in the in the area of 2.30. And he was just one of those goalies who did better with the team in front of him when it really mattered. Um, you know, other than the t other than the bad times, there were also some bright spots in the 80s. Like in 1985, the Toronto Maple Leafs drafted Captain Crunch Wendell Clark, and pretty much because of the Leafs' record in the 84 season, that's how that we were able to draft him. Um, now, Captain Crunch, I know, he got traded in 94 for Hockey Girl 13's favorite Leaf player, Matt Sundin, along with a bunch of other people, uh, but in his first year as the Toronto Maple Leaf, he played for the NHL All-Rookie Game and the NHL All-Star Game, both in 1985. And some of my favorite Leafs players from the 80s included Wendell Clark, and as well as Boris Salming, who played 15 years with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and that is two years longer than Leaf captain, or I should say former Leaf captain, Matt Sundin. And he also played for the Swedish World All-Star Team in 1989, and this guy was so good that he got pretty much a lot of young Swedish players interested in hockey and interested in the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, I doubt that in the past 20 years, there's been at least one Swedish player who hasn't grown up watching Bori Salming uh, play for the Leafs and uh, liked him or was a big fan of him or considered him their hockey hero or who hasn't en been encouraged to play hockey, whether it's in the Elite Swedish League or in the National Hockey League, um, which I'm guessing some of those players were or are still on the Detroit Red Wings because after the Toronto Maple Leafs, he did sign with the Detroit Red Wings in 1989. Now, one of my other favorite players was Rick Five. Um, he is one of the Toronto Maple Leaf captains in the 80s. Uh, he was traded to Toronto with Bill Derlago from Vancouver in exchange for Tiger Williams and Jerry Butler. Um, he played for the Leafs from 1980 to 1987 where he was traded along with Steve Stumpy Thomas and Bob McGill, who happens to be one of Andy Patrill's co-hosts uh, in the pre- and post-game shows uh, with Paul Hendrick, um, well, so and Joe Bowen, too. Now, 
The 80s were not an easy time to bear, but the Leafs and their fans survived, and we are going to honor those Leaf players on Saturday, November 14th at the Air Canada Center as the Leafs take on the Calgary Flames. Oh, I should also mention a, a couple of other things. First of all, uh, Leaf fan favorite Daryl Sittler also played for the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1980 to 1982, even though he played a lot in the 70s, but then again, the theme for this video blog is the 80s. And also, um, prior to the 2007-2008 season, uh, the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs went without a captain was during the 1986 and 1987 season. So, like I said before, that was not a great time, but there have been some bright spots. And we're going to honor them at the Air Canada Center, although I've said it before. Um, so Saturday night, go Leafs go!